morning. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints in Big Sky, a shared ministry of the Episcopal and ELCA Lutheran churches. Um, it is my gift and privilege to be with you all this morning as Pastor Miriam is on sabbatical. We are blessed to have Pastor Paul here, and he gave us such a vision from the outside of who we are and what we're doing in the community. And this month, as I get to preach, preside, and if you need pastoral care, be there for you, um, we're really going to be looking at language and how we share the gifts that we have. We'll be having a, a study after this on Richard Lohr's Breathing Underwater, Spirituality in the Twelve Steps. Any and all are invited. Even if you haven't done the reading, I promise you will have lots of opportunity to learn and be a part of the service. I think Maeve needs a little help. Um, and then um, on the 17th of August, we have Spiritual and Religious, a half-day retreat up at Longview Cabin at the Elkhorn Ranch. We have six spots still open, so please email if you're interested in being a part of that. I'm also really excited that we will have different speakers speaking um, to us, and Jim Delzer will be one of those. And um, we'll have that in just a moment. But first, I'm remembering, I'm supposed to tell you, September 11th, Sunday, at 1 p.m., we have, um, we will be, I left my book right there, but doing the cleaning along um, the riverbed. So please mark that one on your calendars. So, Jim is part of our council here at All Saints in Big Sky, and he is also a cantor here. And he has just been a great blessing in my life and in the lives of many, and so I've asked him to share his experience of the holy in his life. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. So, as I was growing up, the uh, the thought or the words, we're going to church, were spoken often. I still do today at times. The question is, does church continue beyond Sunday? And if we reposition our thinking and our verbiage, church is the people, and then the people go from here, and so church can exist Monday through Friday through Saturday and back to Sunday again. And so for me personally, church or coming to worship has become my refueling stop. Just the same as some of you know I travel between here and California. Well, I've got to hit the gas station somewhere along the way or I'm not going to make it. And so here, coming to worship and the music and the message and the fellowship with each of you and those kinds of things are where I get refueled. And so then I take and go from here into the other six days of the week to hopefully have some kind of impact in this world in a positive way with the message that God has shared with me um, through the worship time or my own personal study. And it's through our actions and words that God becomes alive to others outside of this building. In 1 Peter 3.15 it says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect. So God's gift and grace of salvation and eternal life comes through Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. I never realized the impact that my confirmation verse would have on my life. For by grace you are saved through faith in Christ Jesus, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, so that no one can boast about it. It is that gift. It's something that can only be given to us by God. We can't save it. We can't share it. But we can share God's grace out and around us. And so if this helps me navigate through the world and the days that we have these challenges, because of that verse and salvation, we already know the end of the story. 
So in spite of what happens here, we know what's going to happen to us as we get on the other side of this world. And so that creates the opportunity then, as I say, God intersection moments, people that come across my pathway any given day. And the, the choice of, and as I say, the opening and closing of a door to engage with that individual or those people. And I've learned to always engage. There's different ways that it might happen. And I may not know what to say or what to do, but that quick prayer of send the Holy Spirit, use me as you will, and it always works out in some fashion. So with God in our hearts and filled with the Holy Spirit, we can with confidence go out this door and know that the next six days he is with us, he will fill us with the Spirit, he will lead us through these things, and he will create or provide those opportunities to impact and engage with other people. Galatians 6, 9, and 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So, get refueled, get fired up, hit the road the next six days and have an impact on people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, so much for sharing. I invite us just to take a moment to prepare our hearts before worship. Please stand for our opening hymn. Yeah, where did my book go? Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. We are on page one of your inserts. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And at this time, we invite kids to come down. Maeve, is that going to work with Rex? <laughs> Adelaide is here. Oh, and Adelaide, are you here? Come forward if you're comfortable. Let's see. If you're not comfortable coming up, don't worry. I will come back here and visit with you all, and we can have Rex with us. So this is Maeve and Adelaide. So today, in the scriptures, we're going to hear stories about God meeting people at night. So Abram, that's before he gets named Abraham, has a vision at night, and God comes to him, tells him not to be afraid, and helps him see a vision and calls him, God reveals himself as Abram's shield. And then we're going to hear another story where Jesus is talking about some people at night and being awake. So here's a really important thing for us to know. God loves us, and when we are let's say, by ourselves at night in our beds, and we feel afraid, we might think about God as our shield and our helper, our parent in heaven who loves us, and we might know that God calls us not to be afraid, but to rest in God's love for us. So that is something to hold in our hearts from today's readings. Thank you, Maeve. Thank you, Adelaide. And now we'll have our first reading. Thank you, Mike. A reading from Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is, is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of, the, the word of the God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. 
Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the size of the army, nor are warriors rescued by their great strength. The horse gives vain hope for victory. Despite its great strength, it cannot save. Truly, your eyes upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love. To deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in time of famine. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you, for your holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, even as we place our hope in you. A reading from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, as this one, as, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that there were strangers and foreigners here on earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as, as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and sing our sequence hymn 482, Lord of all hopefulness.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Lord, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so blessed, are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Companioning individuals through extreme situations, especially during my years as a hospital chaplain, I have witnessed firsthand how significant our ideas about God are in a crisis, both for the good and for the bad. Those open to the loving, comforting, healing presence of the divine literally better manage their pain and have hope and are able to be centered and joyful in a very difficult situation. Those who experience their health setbacks or losses as a punishment or who are cut off from hope, meaning, or a higher power literally suffer an added deep kind of psychic pain. As a chaplain, my role was limited to providing non-judgmental spiritual care to those in crisis. This morning, as your associate priest, I have the privilege of inviting all of us to expand how we hear the language of the Bible and the language of God's love so that we have a greater ability to perceive and be open to God's calling to us. I'd like us to consider some of the notions of God that we see in today's readings. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. So I'm pretty sure Abram wouldn't have heard anything from God if he had shut the door of his life to Abram. But instead, he has this amazing vision. He experiences God as a comfort and as his shield, his protector. The psalmist says with us, our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our helper 
and our shield. The psalmist shows us we do not need to win God's love. We need only to open our deepest parts to our helper and shield our Lord. Referencing the imperfect faithful across biblical history, Paul notes, so we heard about Abram, but he went on to mention quite a few others. He says, echoing the words in Genesis, God is not ashamed to be called their God. So if you read the Hebrew scriptures, people make a lot of mistakes, but it doesn't stop God from loving them and walking the way with them. Let's now do a deep dive into the words of Jesus, our wisdom teacher, to see both how he relates to God and how he invites us to know and be known by God. Jesus begins, Do not be afraid, little flock. Can you hear how endearing that is, little flock? But why might Jesus' disciples be afraid? Well, first century Palestine in the time of Jesus was brutal. The Roman Empire ruled with a palm held out for taxes and a fist of violence. Where Rome sought to unify and control the peoples, it conquered through a shared civic religion. The Pharisees matched their energy through purity laws and customs to maintain their own separate identity. Jesus' little flock then had a lot of reasons to be afraid for themselves and for their kin. And as part of Jesus' flock today, we also may be afraid for ourselves and for the generations to come after us. So Jesus goes on to explain why his followers, including us, should not be afraid. For it is your Father's good will, his pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. Now, if we were reading this in the Arabic, we would see that when Jesus says Father, he's using the term Abba, or Daddy, suggesting a very warm relationship. We might wonder, so what is this kingdom that Jesus is repeatedly talking about? Some across Christian history from the Roman Emperor Constantine in 313 AD, who sought to use Christianity to unify and strengthen his empire, to the medieval European Christian crusaders who sought to recover Jerusalem and its surroundings from outsiders' rule, to the vocal sector of Christian nationalists in the U.S. today, perceive God's kingdom literally as a geographic place requiring defense from without and enforcement from within. But do you think that's what Jesus is talking about? Others, especially enslaved and oppressed peoples, understandably conflated heaven with the kingdom of God. Hungry and harassed, broken and bleeding, the nightmare of their day-to-day trials impeded their fully experiencing and perceiving God's dream here, but not ever fully, fully here. Heaven, to cite Revelation, where the old order of things has passed away, where there could be no more crying or pain, captured their sacred imaginations. But I think it's this third 
understanding that really captures Jesus' shorthand in the kingdom. He describes a new age, a promised hope of God in our midst, unfolding with us as the co-creators. From Jesus' parables of the mustard seed and the pearl of great price to his miraculous healings of people's bodies and spirits, the inbreaking of the kingdom of God is Jesus' message to all of us with ears to hear and eyes to see. Did you know that we pray for this coming of the kingdom every time we pray the Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So before we tackle Jesus' directive about selling possessions and giving alms, let's jump ahead to his parables and then circle back. Jesus says, Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down, and he will come and serve them. If you're like me, the language of masters and slaves is very off-putting, but I invite us to see the larger idea here of a power imbalance. Consider Jesus' listeners. Like the slave figures, they were literally the 99% of people living in the Roman Empire who had negligible power over their own destinies. And our egos certainly want us to feel like we are in control. And we do have a lot of say about our lives. But when it comes right down to it on some of the really important things, we are powerless in the face of a loved one's health setback, when there is war or some other crisis. So I think there's a part of us that can relate to that slave place. So, what sets these particular slaves apart? It says, blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. In Jesus' parlance, alert means literally being spiritually awake. And when that God figure, the master, sees them, after he comes back from the wedding banquet in the middle of the night, When he sees them dressed for action, their lamps lit, ready to open the door, he has a really interesting response. Does he demand that they wait on him? No. The God figure flips this power dynamic and he serves the alert. Just sit with that for a moment. In Bible speak, a house could be considered your soul, your inner parts, your heart. So they were alert and open and welcomed the master into their hearts. So what about those people who are spiritually asleep? What happens to them? Well, in Jesus' next parable, he has God portrayed as a burglar. Did you ever think about that? Right there is God as the burglar, and we are the homeowners, or the ones that have access, right, to protecting our souls. And when you have that hardened, and the burglar comes, all of a sudden, they see God for who God is. The sad part is, they missed having that moment of awakeness the rest of their lives, right? Right? 
but know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, God as a thief, a burglar. So has there ever been a time in your life where you felt God was burgling you, helping you snap out of it and see in a fresh way? Jesus concludes his two wisdom parables saying, you must be ready. Where some might hear that as a threat, I hope you might hear his voice as one part exasperation and two parts care. Any parents or grandparents here who have tried to let the ones you love know an important message and maybe more exasperation comes to the top than care, but it's coming from a place of love. Jesus wants us to receive the unmerited gift of God's love. Through numerous parables, he invites us to enter that soul space or kingdom illuminated by hope and the promise of God's reign of life, a vision of what could be in the midst of what we are experiencing right now. This joy, grounded in divine love and not our circumstances, is available to all, whatever our situations. We only need be alert and spiritually awake. So circle back with me to Jesus' admonition, which triggers so many of us. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven. That's a hard one for a lot of us to hear, especially in the 21st century in such a comfortable place as Big Sky. So I just want to make sure we're clear. There is nothing about possessions or money that is intrinsically good or bad. It's literally our relationship with them when we idolize our possessions, when we resist sharing our blessings with others, we pay a price. Not because God wants to punish us or God stops loving us, because, but because we're the ones who have hardened our hearts. We've put something else in that place where God belongs. Nothing we can do can make love God love us any more or make God love us any less. But what we can do is join the awake ones, the alert ones, and welcome God's spirit into our hearts and lives. In closing, I want to share some deep wisdom from James Finley, a Christian contemplative and my teacher at the Living School. If we are absolutely grounded in the absolute love of God that protects us from nothing, even as it sustains us in all things, then we can face all things with courage and tenderness and touch the hurting places in ourselves and others. Amen. Please stand and let us join our voices with Christians around the globe and across time in saying the Nicene Creed. And as you do it, I invite you to say it from the position of the four early Christians.
This is who they beloved. This is the God, not just intellectually believe in, but these are descriptions of the God they love, or as I like to say, the love. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, who worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting the Spirit's power, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. After I say, hear us, O God, you are invited to respond. Your mercy is great. For the Church of Christ, that as we are strengthened in faith, we will be sent forth in peace. In particular, we lift up lift up the church-wide assembly of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America in Columbus, Ohio, August 8th through 12th, and for the Lambeth Conference of Anglican Bishops in England, July 26th through August 8th, that all participants of these gatherings would be attuned to the Holy Spirit, having ears to hear and eyes to see, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For the ministries of our presiding bishops, Michael and Elizabeth, our bishops, Marty and Laurie, our saints council members, Anne, Bill, Terry, Chris, Aaron, Jim, Pam, and Colleen, and our pastor Miriam during this time of Sabbath rest, Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For your spirit flowing through the natural world, that we delight in creation's goodness and protect what is threatened. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For the citizens of this nation and the nations of the world, that we would seek to live in peace within and among ourselves using our talents and time to bless one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For those who cry out from disease, distress, poverty, or powerlessness, especially those who have lost their homes to flooding in Kentucky and to fire in California, and to those on our All Saints prayer list, Karen, the Bevan Shoneman family, Michelle, Jess, Aubrey, the Ethan family, Carol, the Fry family, the Halloran Kippenbrock family, Dick, Dorothea, Wayne, Julie, Rick, 
Melissa, Heather, the Nichols family, the Peterson Frankel family, Julie, Stephanie, Daniela, Isabella, Cynthia, Lauren, Gordon, Audrey, Walden, and Jill. May they be raised up in the arms of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you send us on a journey as you have sent others before us. Direct us as we offer our own personal intercessions in the quiet of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lifting up all who have died, thank you for the grace extended to all your saints throughout the ages that all may be made well in your eternal keeping. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, gracious God, and those prayers known only to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your world and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace, Richard. Peace. We're running a little slow, so I will start setting up. Do you have any music? Play some music for a moment. Well, in a moment. Okay. Just, just to play a little music while we go get the thing. Just short. Can you go down? Bring this down. Thank you. Please be seated.
Let us sing the doxology 380, number verse 3 in your hymnals. Continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and returned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his love. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, took bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. 
Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has told us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at the table.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Like the joy of the Gallatin flowing through our canyon, may the relief of laughter rise through your soul. As the wind loves to call things to dance, may your gravity be lightened by grace. Like the dignity of moonlight restoring the earth, may your thoughts incline with reverence and respect. And may the blessing of God, creator, Christ, and comforter be with you this day and remain with you and all you love and pray for forevermore. Amen. Let us sing How Great Thou Art Found in Your Bulletins.
that you could join us for worship today. We welcome you to Coffee Fellowship afterwards. And uh, just a reminder, next week, weather willing, we will be outside directly under here, but you can go down the side stairs there or take an elevator down or the stairs down and, and go out through the fellowship room as well. So glad you could be with us. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.